Yes, in rectal malformation is uh, normally where there is a problem in the newborn where the anus or rectum is not in the right place. So what happens uh, before the child is born, during the fetal life, there is a common opening for both the urinary passage and the feces passage. So it's called the um, cloaca. So what happens is that there is a septum that divides, that grows and divides the urogenital sinus, which is the urine and the genital system in the front part of this uh, cloacal uh, sump and the rectum and the anus behind. So if there's a failure of the septum dividing these two structures, then there is an anomaly. So there are various different types of anomaly. The most simplest form is where the anus is slightly forward, where the opening instead of uh, where the muscle complex is, is slightly forward. In the girls, it's between the vagina and the, uh, the sphincter muscle. Yeah? So it's slightly forward. The problem with this is that the anus is constantly open and because it's slightly forward, there can be an S-bend of the rectum. So, so what happens is that there could be a problem passing urine, uh, pass opening bowels because the, the feces is coming down and there's an S-bend making it difficult for them to pass uh, open bowels. So the spectrum of interrectal malformation is wide. That's the simplest form that I've just mentioned. The other spectrum is when there's a blind ending rectum, where there's nothing at the bottom end. So when you examine the baby, there's no holes at all, oh, both wow. for okay. boys and girls. So somewhere in between are the various different other forms of interrectal malformation. The most common form in the girl is one where it opens to the back part of the vagina. There's a tiny hole in the vagina. In the boys, the commonness is when the rectum opens into the water pipe, usually at the level of the prostate. So the bladder outlet comes to the area of the prostate and the, usually the, um, the rectum opens to the water pipe, the urethra there. So when the child is born, this is something that the pediatricians will uh, examine for and look for whether the baby is past uh, urine as well as past uh, something called meconium, which is the first feces, the black tarry feces called meconium, and to check whether the baby is past meconium, the right position. So this is a congenital anomaly? Or That's right, could, yes. Right. The, the baby is born with this problem, whereby there is a problem with the formation of the rectum anus and maybe with the water pipe or the genital area. The more severe forms, there can be a field defect whereby there is issues with the urinary genital system as well as the water pipe, kidneys and sometimes the spine and sometimes there can be associated abnormalities of the heart uh, and, and, the, and the vertebra. So all those uh, structures are examined for if a child has uh, a, an anorectal malformation. And what about the incidence of this between in, in children in Malaysia? I mean, yeah. how common is this? The worldwide, uh, indi uh, the worldwide uh, incidence of anorectal malformation is about one in 5,000 children. One in 5,000. So it's both, uh, but it's slightly more prevalent in boys uh, as compared to girls. But uh, the worldwide um, numbers are no difference. There's no difference worldwide, yeah. I understand. Yes, the most severe form whereby there is no holes at all and the baby is not unable to open the bowels. Yeah. You can identify it immediately. Okay. But the lesser form whereby the, the anus is slightly forward and having problems opening bowels may not be identified immediately because with a small opening, the baby can still uh, pass the meconium. So typically how long after birth do these issues kind of become detectable? Yeah, so that's, that's a milder form where there is a problem with the uh, anal opening. They are usually okay with the first few days and they are on, if they are on breastfeed, the, the, the breastfeed feces is very soft and uh, usually uh, more watery. That can come out very easily. So as, soon, as long as the baby is opening bowels, they may not be identified as having an issue with the bottom end. 
but as soon as you introduce solids or you introduce formula feeds there's more residue in the feces and that's when you may find some issues so we we come across patients who've uh, been on breastfeed and then suddenly on um, weaned on to some formula feed they can get into trouble where they, they start to have constipation or um, if they go into solids at about six or seven months of age then that's when they have problems too so constipation is an early indicator yep. uh, after, of an abnormal anus and usually with uh, the constipation is constipation in children is hard to, de to, to decipher because for a breastfeeding child the child may be able to pass open bowels 10 times a day up to once in every 10 days but a formula fed child formula um, feed fed child should be able to open his bowels or her bowels daily yeah that's the difference so uh, the definition of constipation is very variable for a breastfed child so a child who is not able to pass open bowels uh, spontaneously easily straining to open bowels or is having a distended tummy those are indication of a uh, uh, problem opening bowels so if that's the case then uh, seek help or if you notice the opening is not stretching out or the the opening is pinpoint or closer towards the vagina or scrotum in a boy uh, as opposed to where uh, it should be sometimes there's a dimple where the actual position of the uh, uh, anus should be but instead of opening there it's slightly forward towards the vagina or the scrotum of the boy then it's an abnormally placed uh, anus. So then putting things together, um, you, you might need to seek help from a, a pediatrician or pediatric surgeon. It's the type of anomaly that we find. So if the child is born with no opening at all, the child will need an opening so that they can feed and pass feces. So if you don't have an opening at all, the abdomen will get distended with distended intestine and will have more problems. So if it's, the child is identified to have uh, interactive malformation with no opening at all, or an opening into the water pipe, as in the boys, um, then they will require stoma at birth, or soon after birth. So, what, Sorry doctor, what is a stoma? A stoma is an opening where we, we make a small cut in the tummy, bring out the intestine and open it out. So the feces will come and be collected in a bag. Right. That is always, almost always a temporary measure until we sort out the bottom end. So usually the stoma that I create are usually on the left side of the colon and uh, that's uh, a small cut, about two centimeters uh, in length and uh, two ends are opening into the, uh, uh, to the skin. And that will allow the baby to be fed and grow until which time the child is strong enough uh, beyond the neonatal period, usually about three months of age when we do a re reconstructive surgery for the bottom end. For the other uh, children where there is um, uh, normally where there's an opening but not quite a good opening, uh, we usually do the operation beyond the neonatal period which is the first month of life. So I usually do um, an operation for the, the children above the weight of uh, three kilos uh, at around one to three months of age so that they they will uh, recover quickly and subsequently the management is much easier for a younger child as compared to an older child the the care for the child following surgery goes on for up to six months with intensive management and following which uh, you will require the, the, the child may require long-term laxative long-term care for a good bowel management program, uh, which is what we, 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 we will consider what they eat, what they drink, and, and also consider giving them laxatives or, or uh, fecal softness, and even fecal stimulants or bowel stimulants so that they can open their bowels regularly. And so, how typically how long is that recovery process? You were saying it requires an extended uh, regime of, of care, etc. but typically, how long does that so last? So usually an operation will, for the bottom end, uh, so let's go back to the uh, case of the stoma formation. The stoma formation is quite a simple procedure where the stoma is made and almost immediately the, the, the bowel will produce feces 
uh, the stomach will produce feces to a bag, and the child may require to stay, may be required to stay in the hospital for a few days, and then they go home, uh, feeding and, and pooing through the stomach, and the parents be taught how to deal with the stomach bag, and otherwise the child is completely normal. And the second operation, if they require the first operation, if they if they just require the first single operation, the operation will involve moving the anus, the opening, into the correct position through the muscle sphincter. Yeah, the muscle sphincter is what holds our feces inside. Right. Without holding the feces inside, we, are, we will be incontinent. Right. So the muscle is very important. So the, 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 if the position, the, uh, the opening is not right, if it's in the water pipe or it's in slightly anterior or forward, to where the muscles should, should be is moved backwards. The operation is something that we do regularly and um, the complications for that would be uh, looking after the wound. So if the child hasn't got a stoma, the, the child will be opening bowels through that opening in the bottom almost instantaneously. So as soon as the operation is done, feces will be coming through. So feces on wound is not healthy. So we need to look after the wound very carefully uh, if there isn't a covering stoma. So the wound will, may take one or two weeks to heal. And the problem with healing is that most wound would close with scarring. So if you get an opening, uh, a joint at the bottom where the skin is attached to the bowel, it's a circular joint and the circular joint has a tendency of narrowing like that so the bottom end may stricture or narrow down the child after two weeks following the surgery will require something called dilatation so stretching the bottom end to prevent narrowing that may go on for a few months until which time where the dilating the bottom is smooth with a reasonable size caliber um, dilator and, and then once the dilatation is not required, we'll stop it usually about three or four months. For but that minutes. stretching is done at home? Yes, the it's parents will be taught how to stretch right? Uh, and that's a daily pro process. So, so come, come back to when we do the operation, if we need to stretch the bottom end, it's easier and less traumatic to be done in a younger child compared to a one-year-old two-year-old so a child who's one year old will, will, will give a good fight when you're trying to do a daily dilatation despite getting used to dilatation they will still fight so identifying this problem early doing the operation early at the right time is good because then it's not so traumatic for the child so once the operation is done, the child will recover from the operation itself. Uh, if the child has uh, stoma, the stoma will be closed and then the start, child will start opening bowels from the bottom end. So from then on, we need to be vigilant about the child going into having problems with constipation or incontinence. So the bowel management is very important. So uh, uh, you need to have good liaison with your doctor and the nursing staff from the hospital so that the right amount of laxative and stimulant is given and right advice with regards to the uh, diet and fluid intake and a regular follow-up is important so that they don't get into trouble. Uh, this may go on for many years for some children. Uh, some children they, they, go, they, they get to normality within a few years. So the long-term follow-up is very important. Often um, five or six years of having on and off problems is something that we see sometimes. And after which usually when we, uh, most conditions in pediatric surgery, once they pass the fifth year of life, they tend to have a normalish life.